We're now going to model the next part, which is the M5 shoulder screw. As always, we're going to start a standard millimeter IPT. And from looking at this part, I'm, we're going to model it by doing a revolve. So the first thing we're going to do is start a sketch, uh, and I'm going to choose the XY plane. With a revolve, the first thing we want to do is put in a center line. It needs to be the at least the height of what we're going to revolve. And you'll notice it didn't change the format of the line, but with the venter, that's fine. We'll change it afterwards. I'm just going to fit to page. Now I'm going to start doing the sketch geometry. So as with everything else on Inventor, we keep our sketches nice and simple and we'll detail it afterwards. So there we go. So we've, and what I've done is I've snapped it to the center line so that I can use this dimension for the line as the dimension for the length of it. Now I'm going to add the dimensions on here. So we've got a 6mm part there and then a 12mm diameter part here. And we know that this depth here is 5 mil. So now our sketch is fully constrained. And in our status bar, we can see that it says fully constrained down here. Now I'm going to hit R for revolve. And because I've already given it a center line and a profile, of course, the inventors picked that up for us. So I'm just going to hit OK. Now there is an undercut, so I'm going to put in uh, another sketch on the XY plane. So I'm going to hit Create 2D Sketch or the S button for the hotkey. Put another sketch on there. And if you press F7, it actually slices the graphics, so now you can see we're, we're on the XY plane, so we can see half of it. And I'm now going to project the geometry, because obviously I need to use this to do our cut. So there we go. We know that the, the, uh, well, the undercut is 0.25 radius, so of course it's diameter of 0.5. And I'm just going to zoom in there. And then we're going to do a dimension from the top. To there and what we're going to do is make it half of this so it doesn't matter if we change this it will always be at the radius from underneath there and now I'm going to use the revolve button uh, it's picked up the profile of course but didn't know what the axis was so I'm actually just going to use the um, the y-axis in there and it's already defaulted to cut because it knows we're trying to cut the material away so I'm just going to hit OK that's our undercut done uh, I'm now going to put the um, the aluminium key hole in the top so S for sketch onto the top profile. I have this tool here which I haven't used yet which is the polygon tool so it works very similar to the circle it's a center point start and then you click to the outside and I'm going to uh, change it well it defaults to six and we're trying to draw a hexagon so that's absolutely fine uh, and I'm going to draw it in line here so just to match the drawings and we know that the dimension is 1.8 from here to here so I'm going to add that one in and you can see that it's one dimension needed because it doesn't actually know whereabouts this should be fixed so I'm going to add a constraint onto there so I'm going to use the horizontal constraint and do it on this line here and now we can see it's gone blue so the sketch geometry is fully constrained and that's also confirmed down here in the status bar Going to extrude that two and a half mil deep, so cut that into there. Uh, there's also a radius, so I've just hit F for fillet, and there's a radius on the top there of half a mil. So I just add that whilst we're here. You can see we've done most of it, and it's now just the the uh, threads we need to add on to the bottom there. So we'll go ahead and do that next. We're going to do another sketch on the XY plane, so sketch XY plane. Remember earlier we said F7, so that slices the graphics. I'm going to project the uh, the bottom face and this side face here, so we can start doing these screw cutaways. So we know that the first part is actually 10 mil from the top, so we're going to basically just sketch in to start with the thread for one, and then we're going to what's called pattern it down. And I'll show you how to do that. And I mention it afterwards. So the first thing is a little cutaway and then down and then up and we're just going to do it like this so it's very rough as you can see and we're going to now dimension it so like I said this one here is 10 millimeters and we got this one here is at 0.2 
and I'm going to use the equals constraint and the hotkey for that is the equals button I'm just going to make because this is point two also I'm going to copy that across just there this one is 60 degrees so we're going to add that in and we've got this dimension here is um, actually we're going to align them first horizontally so this one here with this one here and then I'm going to add the dimension to zoom in a little here. So we know it's 5mm and this outer one here is 6mm so that will be 0.5. And we're going to put this dimension in here. Which is 1.4. And you can see this here so I'm going to add equals to these two lines. And now you can see we're fully constrained just down here. The revolve button, and uh, it's already picked that up, and then we just need to select the axis, which we know from earlier is the y axis. And um, obviously, I'm going to change this here to cut, and I'm going to hit OK. So now you can see we've got one cut, uh, and there is actually a pattern function. There's two there's a circular pattern and a rectangular pattern. Because we want to copy this cut linearly downwards, we're going to use the rectangular pattern. So the first thing that happens when you hit rectangular is it asks what features you're trying to pattern and as we know it's the one we just picked so we can either select it here in the workspace or we can even go into the browser and select it in there. The second thing it says is okay which direction am I patterning this in and you can of course do two so if you think about it in one in the x and one in the y but we only need to do it in one direction so I'm going to use the y axis as my reference and you can see it's given us a preview here uh, of what it's going to look like and it defaults to two occurrences in 10 millimeters. Now, just be clear, the occurrence includes the one you're patterning. So if I want, for example, four, then I type in four, not three, because I already have one. So you can see it's going in the wrong direction, so we're gonna flip that using this, and we don't actually need two through 10 millimeters. We need eight with a spacing of uh, 1.2 millimeters because that will give us the edge and you can see there it's going to do it but um, actually we need 9 to get rid of the end bit so I'll just chuck that in and if I hit OK there you can see that's done all of it for you so you can see the pattern tool is very useful for when you are uh, doing the same feature over and over again it's very useful very quick so now all we need to do is uh, add the material to this part here so we're going to go ahead and do that right now so of course you can change it up here or you can go into eye properties which can also be found in the application menu scoot across to the physical tab go ahead and change that to uh, stainless steel and hit OK and there we have it that's the part completed